Is your bike due for brake pads? If so, don't sweat it. It's actually a pretty easy job and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's open up the shop manual. This episode of the shop manual is brought to you by Kershaw, my go-to unboxing knife and a tool I carry with me everywhere. Get 25% off your order at kershawknives.com with code 1TSM25. On most bikes, inspecting the brake pads starts with shining a flashlight into the caliper. From the correct angle, you should be able to get a clear view of the pads where they contact the disc. Some pads will have a groove in them to help monitor wear but not all do, so if there's less than two millimeters of friction material projecting off the backing plate, that's about the thickness of a nickel, they're worn down enough to warrant replacement. As I said in the intro, this is a pretty easy job, but you will need some supplies. Grab whatever hand tools are required to remove your fluid reservoir, caliper, and pads, plus an old toothbrush and some soapy water for cleaning the caliper, some nitrile gloves, some brake cleaner or isopropyl alcohol, and a Scotch-Brite pad for cleaning the disc, and of course, plenty of rags. I'm working on a bike lift, but this is definitely something you can do with the bike on the ground on its side stand. And while it is sometimes possible to replace the brake pads without removing the caliper, that's the lazy way to do it because it forfeits the opportunity to inspect and clean some important parts. If your brake pads are retained with a threaded pin or plug, go ahead and crack that loose now while the caliper is still firmly attached to the fork. Sometimes these bolts are pretty corroded, so feel free to apply a little penetrating lube and give it time to work. I've seen plenty of brake jobs come to a screeching halt before they even start because someone strips the head of the sucker because it's rusty. Now unbolt the caliper from the bike and right away, take some pictures of it from a few angles. There aren't a lot of pieces here, but they do install in a specific way that, at least for me, isn't always intuitive. The spring plate orientation in particular can throw me off, so it's handy to have some photos to reference later. Once the caliper is off the bike, it is really important that you don't accidentally pull the brake lever since that could pop the pistons out and cause all sorts of problems. So an easy solution is to simply hang a rag over the brake lever as a reminder. Okay, so pad retaining hardware is loose, the caliper is off the bike, now fully remove the pad hanger pin. At this point, the pads should just slide out the top or bottom of the caliper body. Note that there might be shim plates or insulators on the back of the brake pads. These can serve to reduce heat transfer, vibration, and noise. Some bikes have them, some bikes like this particular one don't, and some aftermarket brake pads won't even fit into the caliper with the shims installed, so don't feel obligated to use them. Set all the retaining hardware aside and take a look at your old brake pads the friction material should be evenly worn across the surface. If it's significantly thicker at one end than the other, that may mean you have a caliper piston that's not moving freely, a notched pad retaining pin, or if you have pin slide calipers like the ones on this CRF, the pins and collars that allow lateral movement of the caliper may need to be greased. If that all looks good, move on to your disc and inspect it for cracks, gouges, or other damage. If the surface is obviously worn, as in there's a ridge along the swept area, Measure the disc thickness to ensure it's still within spec. The disc will have its minimum thickness stamped right on it somewhere, and if it's thinner than that figure, then it's time to replace it. We also want to clean the disc, which isn't something most people bother to do, but it's an important step. Scrubbing the disc with a Scotch-Brite pad will remove smeared on brake pad material and other contaminants, which helps your new pads break in quicker. Scour the whole disc, then use a clean rag with either brake cleaner or isopropyl alcohol to give it a final wipe down. Now let's look at the caliper. As your brake pads wore down, the pistons extend out and we'll need to push the pistons back in in order to fit the thicker new brake pads. However, the pistons are all covered in dirt, so if we just force them in, that crud might damage the piston seals. So we're gonna clean them. And the best way to do that is with a mild detergent like Simple Green or just soapy water and a soft brush. Again, this isn't something that most people are gonna do, but it is an important step to ensure your brakes work well and work for a long time. Use your brush and the rag to clean all the way around the pistons. And if you find any stubborn grime or corrosion, you can actually use triple fine steel wool to polish it off. However, if the pistons are deeply pitted or corroded, then you're gonna need to replace them. Also, if you find that the piston seals are bulging or leaking, that is another sign that you're due for a caliper rebuild. 
Okay, the rotor is dressed, the caliper is clean. We are now almost ready to push the pistons back into the caliper body, which you can usually do by hand. Before you start squeezing though, you're gonna to wanna to remove the lid from the brake fluid reservoir, since pushing the pistons in is gonna force fluid up through the system. So keep an eye on that fluid level, and if it gets too high, you can wick excess fluid off with a paper towel. Pushing the pistons in can be a little like playing whack-a-mole, since pressing one piston in may force another one out. Just work at them slowly until they're seated all the way in. If they're really hard to move, you can slide the old pads back into place and then use a flat blade screwdriver to wedge them apart. All right, it is finally time to install the new brake pads. And perhaps you've heard that you're supposed to apply some grease to things as they go back together. Smearing high temperature grease on the back of the pads and on the pad hanger pin is supposed to help things move freely and reduce squealing. But in my experience, all it does is attract dirt and make a really big mess. So I prefer to assemble everything dry. The only place that I would recommend applying grease, specifically a silicone based high temperature grease, is to the inside of the boot and collars if you have a slide pin caliper mount as we do on this CRF 230L. So go ahead and put everything back together, making sure the pads and spring plates are in place and the retaining hardware is properly installed. Then with the pad spread, slide the caliper back into position on the disc, install the bolts and tighten everything to the appropriate torque. Finally, pump the brake lever to push the pads against the disc and make sure you brake in your new pads with progressively stronger stops over the course of a 15 or 20 mile ride. And that is how you replace your brake pads. Pretty easy, right? Now, if you've got a twin disc setup, then you still have the other side to do, and I would recommend doing one caliper at a time so that it's easier to push the pistons in. The rear brake is gonna follow the same procedure, and while I like to think this was a very thorough overview, you should still be referencing your model-specific shop manual whenever you work on your bike. <laughs>